As streams and rivers carry water from the mountains to the ocean, its water provides life for millions of people. Its spectacular views will inspire us, while its meandering path invites our adventure and exploration. Of course, every powerful rapid catches our interest and raises our heartbeats drastically. As millions of people rely on rivers to support Earth's growing civilization, the health of these waterways is rapidly diminishing. If something isn't done to protect these natural resources, everyone will pay the price. Hydropower projects around the world are damming up pristine mountain rivers, killing the free-flowing rivers many whitewater paddlers have come to love. Also, urban sprawl is cutting into the wilderness we once knew. And as development continues, paddlers will find themselves next to industrial complexes which are greatly affecting the river environment. Paper mills are dumping toxic chemicals into the rivers while sewer treatment plants often spill raw sewage into our nation's rivers and streams. As more people are living in rural areas along streams and rivers, paddlers often find themselves facing private property, no trespassing signs, even where we once accessed the river freely. As whitewater paddlers, we have the responsibility to protect the wild and scenic waterways through communication with community members, government officials, public utilities, and hard work with fellow boaters to meet issues facing our beloved rivers head on. The mission of River Stewardship is to conserve and restore America's whitewater resources and to enhance opportunities to enjoy them safely. Many issues face the paddling community today, including safety, access, education, and protection of many rivers across the nation and around the world. Each whitewater paddler on the water should have the basic knowledge of how their actions impact other paddlers, the local community, and the environment. Also, each boater should be aware of the many ways to get involved and keep their local river running wild and free. The whitewater paddling community is a very close-knit family, often ready to lend a hand and help out fellow boaters as well as stand up for the protection of nature's rivers. American Whitewater is the leading organization working to protect and restore rivers. This nonprofit organization also maintains a national inventory of whitewater rivers monitors potential threats of whitewater river resources, publishes information on river conservation, works with government agencies to protect the ability of the public to have a voice in the management of rivers, advocates for legislation protecting our rivers and their aquatic resources, and provides technical advice to local groups regarding river conservation and management. American Whitewater is member-driven and provides many opportunities to volunteer in river stewardship projects across the country. Visit their website at AmericanWhitewater.org where an extensive toolkit educating paddlers and the general public on many of the issues surrounding the sport of whitewater boating is provided. On a local level, many paddling clubs have sprang into action ready to address issues close to home, provide a network of local paddlers, and organize trips and courses for members. Joining your local paddling club or American Whitewater is a great investment in the future health of rivers and streams. Recreation access is likely the greatest unresolved land management issue in America today. While conservation, resource protection, and restoration get much attention from federal agencies and recreationists, access is often overlooked and there is often a lack of funding, direction, and expertise in this field. Part of the problem is that recreationists, law enforcement officials, land and river managers, and landowners have entirely different expectations about appropriate activities and levels of use. Another part of the access problem is that these individuals also have misunderstandings about the law and their rights, duties, and protection. The bottom line is that the most serious access issues are the result of rooted dogmatic differences, which can only be reconciled by the passage of time education, through careful negotiations and discussions, money and acquisition, or the legal system. The most effective means of addressing these issues is to face them proactively and work on easing tensions before they flare into conflicts. Many times the landowner will claim that they own a particular river or stream. As recreationists, we often have the right to float down river. 
Many states have navigability laws addressing this issue. For example, in Maine, any person may hunt, fish, and paddle within a body of water. But in Virginia, a landowner may actually own a river or stream and limit access. However, access through private property to the river is not always available, creating many issues regarding paddling certain sections of river. Before paddling a river in a particular state, you should know and understand the laws surrounding your rights as a boater. Also, just because an area is posted or closed doesn't mean you can't use it. Talk to the landowner or land manager in a respectful manner to explore their reasoning for not allowing access. Many times, landowners just want to know who's using their land. Be positive, patient, and respectful to landowners even if they do not allow access. Many times, American Whitewater will help to negotiate, provide public relations, funding, and strategy for access issues. American Whitewater is also working to resolve many waterfall closures on rivers paddlers would love to experience. Many times these vertical drops are closed to paddling due to government agencies that are concerned about liability issues related to waterfall running. Another issue paddlers and organizations such as American Whitewater face around the world is the protection of free flowing rivers. Today, hydropower is growing and becoming a popular form of electricity production. As dams are constructed, they destroy the natural environment and ecosystem forever. They flood mountain valleys, forcing residents to move, wildlife to migrate, destroying unique plant life, and often burying world-class sections of whitewater rapids under hundreds of feet of lake water. In some cases, such as Glen Canyon Dam in the Grand Canyon, water is held back in a massive lake in the middle of the desert, causing water to evaporate as people continue to utilize the Colorado River for drinking water, irrigation, and hydropower. The river runs dry, never making it to the ocean.